Oh, uh, I'm useless, absolutely useless, <laughs> and I'm afraid having children didn't help <laughs> that situation. He's described as looking like a question mark, um, and never turned to me in a crisis. Hi, Eddie. Hi. This is called The Good Nurse, and I really identified with her character, which was super scary. Um, good is a difficult thing to play, and I realized that physically there must have been things you were doing to create trust mm. and the feeling of being good. Mm. What did you consciously do to build that physically? Well, um... It was a lot of reading about the real man. He, Charlie, and, and not just with his relationship with Amy, but with many of the nurses he had worked with previously for the past decade, um, would ingratiate himself to people. And he would often do that by being very self-deprecating, very... Um, almost vulnerable he would he would often mock like his home life was a, a nightmare and and he would all often sell like mock himself uh and and what a, what a disaster things were at home as a way to kind of um to make people lean into him and want to protect him and look after him and i thought that was very interesting so that was uh but but then finding that almost physically was about making him uh, um almost invisible, almost um, blank. There was something in, in the book, The Good Nurse, that the film is based on. He's described as looking like a question mark. Um, and that was not only a kind of reference to his quite unique physicality, but it was also um, this quality he had that made people sort of lean into him. Um, and I thought that was interesting too. Do you think that if the bond between the two of them had not been as strong that they would never have got him to do what he does at the end because that's a, a thing of trust you want to please the other person it's a really uh, beautiful observation because we met the real amy making this movie and she describes how charlie was kind how he was empathetic how he was self-deprecating um and how he saved her life and how she met this other human being twice, who was an empty vessel, lost all life in his eyes, and um, incredibly arrogant. And, but that, the fact that they were two different people for her, they, she said it was disassociative, meant that we could really lean into the truth of that friendship. And I think you're absolutely right. I think it was, it was the specifics of Amy and her absolute belief in him. And then when she was so shocked to realize what he was doing, rather than, um, confront him with violence, which so often violence is confronted with violence to prevent it. Uh, she used her humanity and her compassion, and it was was that compassion that stopped him ultimately. And um, and I thought that was a really interesting in this moment in the world of of great violence. It felt that felt a really interesting take. Until I became a mum mm. and had to change a diaper, <laughs> I was horribly squeamish. Yeah. <laughs> I was faint when they took my blood. You portray a nurse. How good are you with those, you know, putting in needles and the squeamish aspect? Oh, I'm useless, absolutely <laughs> useless, and I'm afraid having children didn't help <laughs> that situation. I, we went to nurse school, Jessica and I, for a few weeks. I, it, I just was pretty bad, honestly. Like in the first take of shooting this film, I managed to pin myself with a, with a, a needle. So it, it, it was it was a pretty disastrous start, and it, and it did get slightly better. But but Jess is amazing because Jess is very decisive. Jessica Chastain, she's she's really good in a crisis. I tend to kind of I said, well, I could do this or could I do that? And by by the time I've made a decision, the person's probably died. So um, never turn to me in a crisis. I was going to hope that you would help me <laughs> to be in a bad position, but I'm rescinding that invitation. Thank you so much for your time.